Today we're going to talk about water and aqueous systems. Water is really important in chemistry. Uh, it's so important that we give it a special name. Uh, we call it the universal solvent because it dissolves almost everything. Um, so water is really important, so we're going to learn about water today. The first thing we want to know is that water is what's called a triatomic molecule. Okay, triatomic. Tri meaning three, and of course atomic referring to atoms. Water is a triatomic molecule because water symbol is H2O. So you have two oxygens, I'm sorry, two hydrogens and one oxygen, um, and that makes up your water molecule. Now, uh, the water molecule is going to look a certain way. Um, if you'll remember from your periodic chart, from looking at the periodic chart, you'll know that oxygen is a much larger element than hydrogen. So when you draw water, um, usually if you have a color-coded diagram, um, your oxygen is going to be in blue, and then your hydrogens are going to be a lot smaller off to the side, and they are going to be in red, usually. Okay? Now, because of the fact that oxygen is so much larger than the hydrogens, it's kind of like you know, having the big guy and the little bitty guys in a tug of war, okay? We know from a couple of units ago that water is bonded between the hydrogen and the oxygen here and the hydrogen and the oxygen here. Each one of those bonds is a covalent bond, okay? So that little bond right there would be called a covalent bond, okay? Also, it can be called a molecular bond because you have a non-metal and a non-metal bonded together, okay? Now, you also know that oxygen has eight protons in its nucleus and eight electrons around the outside in the clouds. And you know that hydrogen has one proton in its nucleus and one electron floating around the outside as well. Well, think of them as magnets, okay? Oxygen has all these eight pluses. Hydrogen only has its one plus or its one proton in its um, nucleus. And so, the electrons are, are really um, pulled towards the eight protons that are in the nucleus of the oxygen. Now, they don't give away their electrons like it would if it was an ionic bond between a metal and a non-metal, but the electrons are pulled more closer to the oxygen end because oxygen has those eight pluses that it's like a little magnet. It attracts the negatives to them. Because of that, the oxygen end of water has a slightly negative charge, and the hydrogen ends of the water have a slightly positive charge. And because of the fact that the water molecule has a slightly negative end and a slightly positive end, we call that polar. So the bonds between the oxygen and the hydrogen in a water molecule are polar covalent bonds. Okay, polar because slightly positive hydrogen ends, slightly negative oxygen ends. Covalent because even though the electrons are pulled more towards the oxygen, they're still shared. Okay, so oxygen, again, slightly negative, hydrogen, slightly positive, even though our electrons are shared. Okay, the overall charge on this element and on this compound, I'm sorry, made of hydrogen and oxygen, the overall charge is still zero, okay? But just remember, slightly negative, slightly positive end makes it a polar covalent bond. That polarity of this bond is what makes water a good solvent. Now let's talk about surface properties. Have you ever uh, water skied or seen a leaf floating on top of the water? or ever like made a paper clip float on top of the water. All right, the reason why all of these things can happen is because water has this thing called surface tension. Surface tension occurs in, um, in water because of the fact that water is polar. Um, if we think again about the little water molecules, Okay, so here's an oxygen on a water molecule, and then here's our hydrogens. Okay, okay. remember this 
is slightly negative, our hydrogens are slightly positive, and you know that like in a lake, it's not one H2O, it's a bunch of H2Os together. So what happens is the positive end of the hydrogen is attracted like a magnet to the negative end of the oxygen, okay? And that bond there, it's a very weak bond, but that little bond that's kind of like a magnet, like the, the north end of the magnet attracting the south end of the magnet, that's called a hydrogen bond. Okay? Hydrogen bonding, one water molecule, the plus side of the positive, slightly positive charged hydrogen, attracted like a magnet to the negative side of another molecule, that's what makes a hydrogen bond. And that's what gives us surface tension. That's why you can water ski on water. That's why those little bugs can kind of float on top of the water. Um, you can make a paper clip float on top of the water is because of surface tension. Now, there's also this thing called a surfactant. A surfactant is a wetting agent, okay? It like wets the water molecules. Um, when we have something that we want to mix with water that's not usually going to work, okay, what we do is we add a surfactant. The surfactant breaks up the surface tension. It disturbs these bonds. These are not strong bonds like ionic or covalent bonds. These are weak bonds, though they are called bonds nonetheless. Uh, they're weak bonds, which can be broken by something called a surfactant. And a surfactant, again, breaks up our surface tension and when you break up surface tension, um, then things can move around a little bit better, all right? Now, soap is a good example of a surfactant. As a matter of fact, uh, several years ago, there was a laundry soap named Surf, short for surfactant, okay? And um, surfactants work in such a way, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna change my screen here for a minute. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna take, as soon as this comes up, I'm going to take some pepper, um, and just normal, you know, what you find in your kitchen, pepper, okay? And what I've done here is I have a Petri dish just with water in it, and then here, whoops, you can see kind of there my black pepper, okay? So I'm going to shake a bunch of black pepper on there, okay? All right, so there's my pepper. You can see kind of by the video, you can see that my pepper is floating around at the top. It's kind of stuck at the top, and then there's some that does sink. Um, pepper um, is more dense than water, so you would think it would sink, uh, but it doesn't, and that's because of the surface tension of the water. But I can add a surfactant such as dish soap, and I'll put a little bit um, right here on my toothpick, and if you'll watch, I'm just going to touch with the soap and watch what happens. Okay, the pepper moved away quickly. Why? Because when I touched with the soap, when I touched the pepper with the soap, okay, I broke the surface tension on top of the water um, with the surfactant, and then when the surface tension is broken, notice the pepper has fallen to the bottom, um, but then some of the other has like swam to the outside. But I broke the surface tension with the surfactant. So that's my surfactant. Now let me switch back over to my board. Okay, I told you that this unit was about water and aqueous solutions. So we've gotten um, through the water part. So now let's talk about aqueous solutions a little bit, okay? So an aqueous solution 